If you're alive on planet Earth today, you are a candidate for God's love. For God so loved the world that whosoever might be saved. Well, then you say, Pastor Jeremiah, why isn't everybody saved? Why isn't everybody a Christian? Why doesn't everybody have a free pass to heaven? Because you see, God's love is expansive, but it's also exclusive. Here's what I mean. Whosoever, what's the next word? Believes. Four times in these few verses, Jesus uses variations of the word believe, perhaps the most important key word in John's gospel. The love of God will prove useless to everyone who does not believe. You see, God can offer you his love, and he offers it to the whole world and to everyone. If there's any gospel that you have heard that doesn't work in any place in the world, it's not the Christian gospel. The Christian gospel is for the whole world, the third world, for our world, for any world. But listen, just because God offers you his love doesn't mean that you get his love. Because in order to get his love, you have to receive it. You have to reach out your hands and take it. If I said, I have tickets to the Padres game, so, in order to receive God's love, mercy, forgiveness, and be fully restored back to God's eternal paradise, a relationship with God the Father. See, sin, your sin, my sin, everybody's sin, is what keeps you away from a full, restored relationship with Jesus Christ, God the Father. So why do people say no to such a great offer? Imagine if you, the bank called you today and said, hey, um, we're going to take mercy on you. And you say, but I'm not behind on any of my payments. That's okay. We're still going to cancel all your debt forever. You'd say, ah. Uh, but I'm making my payments on time. I'm, I'm, I'm living a pretty good life. I'm doing okay. My credit report is 810. The bank says, well, you owe 300,000 on your, or 200,000 on your house still. You got some credit card debt. We're gonna cancel all your debts, your financial debts, as long as you live. Do you think someone would say no to that offer? There are people that would say no. Astonishing. You know, Amish people, they would say no because they don't take free money, they don't take government money, they only take the money they worked for. Yeah, even if the government sends them a stimulus check, they most of them donate it to um, their local church. But think of the offer. Think about what that minister said. The love of God is available to everyone, whosoever believes. So why do people say no? Well, the answer is because of the devil. Doubt. Where does doubt come from? Most people don't realize doubt does not come from within you. You are a child of God. Think about it. Most people say, why am I doubting? Because in my experience, you are not doubting. The doubt is coming from an outside source. The sin is coming from an outside source. And then what you do is you embrace that sin. You embrace that doubt. You embrace those pleasures into your life. You say, yeah, that sounds pretty good. I think I'm going to go down that ro road, the wide road to destruction. But let's finish this up with God's offer. Look what God's offering you. Look at what the bank was offering in my, you know, silly worldly example. No matter how much money you spend, the bank's going to cover it the rest of your life. Now look at what God's offered you. No matter how much you have sinned in the past, 
Even if you have murdered people and you are currently in prison for it for the rest of your life, does not matter. God is willing to forgive every sin you've ever committed. But it's not a license to keep sinning. You have to then start living for Christ. You have to get down on your knees and ask Christ for forgiveness. See, we live in a world today where um, the, the gospel has been manipulated and, I can't think of the other word, it's just been torn apart. The truthful gospel has been torn apart. The true gospel says, you know, people say today, well, yeah, I believe that. It's not enough. Say, whoever shall believe. Well, yes. It says very clearly in the Bible, you have to receive Jesus Christ. You have to believe in Jesus Christ. And the one thing everybody misses in this world, forgiveness of sin. You see... Without your sin, none of this would matter. The whole entire thing is about your sins, my sins. What separates you from God? S-I-N, sin. Sin separates you from God the Father. God the Father molded Adam with his own hands and Eve from the rib of Adam. We have been molded into God's perfection when we're a little baby, but we are born into sin. We are born into a sinful world, and then we go out and embrace sin and run around frolicking with sin, laughing, drinking, um, pornography, um, sex outside of marriage, drugs, you know, our thoughts against people. We hate people we work with. We hate our neighbors. You're mad at someone in your family from 40 years ago. You are a sinner. And that sin separates you from God. Without sin, there would be no need for Jesus Christ. He is the blood sacrifice once and for all, the final blood sacrifice that God has not spared. He has not withheld. He gave his only begotten son. So for you to say, yeah, I believe in that, that's not enough. Jesus said, even the demons believe there's but one God, only one God, and they shudder. So if just believing was enough, then why aren't the demons saved? The ones, you know, demons, fallen angels that rebelled against God, a third of the angels. Why are the people in hell, why are the people in the lake of burning sulfur not because they're in the lake of burning sulfur, so they, they're looking up at, you know, heaven on the other side. They fully, they now fully believe. They now fully believe. You say on earth, well, I don't believe. But if you go to hell, I pray you don't. But without believing in Jesus, you, you're guaranteed to send yourself to hell. So in hell, every single person believes 100% in Jesus Christ and the message of the gospel. Now, isn't that a catch-22? But you say, well, I believe. So how come you're not immediately sucked out of hell and thrown into heaven? Okay, this person finally believes. It's too late. God's offer has an expiration date. That expiration date is the day you die. So what's the answer? getting on your knees. If you truly believe, you won't have a problem doing this next step. I want to say that again. If you truly believe in God's offer, you won't have any problems with the next step. But if you say you believe and you refuse to get on your knees and ask for forgiveness of your personal sins, 
Therefore, letting God, Jesus Christ, fully restore you again and receive in the Holy Spirit. If you refuse to do the second half, then you have to logically, you have to common sense logically question the first part about your believing. Maybe you don't believe as much as you think. And I'm not here to make um, believers doubt, but if you've never gotten down on your knees and said, Lord, I need the, my sins removed away from me so I can fully be restored to God the Father again. If you've never done that, then maybe your sins are still resting upon you because even the demons believe. Even God's enemies fully believe. God's enemies fully believe. They believe in Jesus. They know who he is. The demons that were in the man that Jesus sent into the um, nearby um, hogs, the pigs, they ran towards Jesus. This one man ran towards Jesus, but he had several demons in him. And they said, you can look it up in the Bible, we know who you are. And Jesus commanded them to be quiet because their, his time had not come yet. You see, everybody on the other side of the veil knows who Jesus is. There's no doubt about it. Everybody knows who Jesus is since the beginning of time. So I'll finish with this. Believing is great, but I reluctantly say it's not enough. And I'm going to say it this way so you understand it. You have to do the second part. Get on your knees and ask for forgiveness of your sins. You need to be washed. Just by believing, you're not washed. Otherwise, you would be washing your sins away yourself. Oh, I believe I've just washed my own sins away. Well, then you could become your own God. There'd be no need for you to believe in God. You could forgive your own sins. You could create your own universe, stars, galaxies. There's no need for you to follow God around if you are capable of doing these things like God does. But you're not, and I am not capable of that. You need to get down on your knees. And here's how I'll say it. There's actually not two parts. I only separated them so you could understand that you need to do both things. These two parts are one part. They're the same exact act. If you truly believe and understand what Christ did for you on the cross, you will naturally fall on your face, on your knees, and say, Lord, forgive me, for I am a sinner. What's the first thing Peter did? He got out of the boat. He fell on his knees and begged Jesus to depart from him. He said, I am not worthy. Depart from me. I'm not worthy, Lord. I'm a sinful man. You are a holy man. Jesus said, come, follow me. They dropped the um, netting to, and the ropes to the fishing um, vessel, and they started following. If you truly believe, you will take the next step, the next natural step. Now, once you're washed, you're washed. Your sins are forgiven. It cannot be taken away because then it falls on Christ and no one can snatch you, a new believer, out of his hands. You might sin once in a while, but hopefully you're in the Bible daily. Hopefully you're around other Christians. Hopefully you're following Jesus. And your, your sins in the future will be unintentional and small. Now, I'm about out of time, and that's all I got time to tell you is, if you believe you're saved, and you've never had your sins washed, and I'm not talking about baptism, I'm talking about the only way to get your sins washed is spiritually from, from the heart of Christ to your heart. And he will let you know, I've just washed all your sins away. You will feel like a new creature. You'll feel like a dove just lifting up. You'll, you'll feel so light and so great. You'll want to leap around. <laughs> kind of like a man who is just healed of um, lameness. He jumps up and his legs work and he runs around telling everybody about this Jesus Christ 
who just saved him and forgave all his sins. 